Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Robert Taylor here to uh, continue on with our discussion on landscapes and materials and whatnot. Last time, Tuesday, we did, uh, we just made up the basic material right here. That's all we did. And right now, we're going to be going over UVs and explaining the importance of them. So, as of right now, this is all uh, doing doing this through the texture chords. So, what are the texture coordinates or texture chords? So, if I come here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a cube in the world. The first thing I'm going to do with this cube is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put this right here on that. So, as you can see right here. This is one meter by one meter by one meter, I believe. Yeah, one by one by one. So this is one meter by one meter by one meter. So with that knowledge, we'll remember that down the road. As you can see, when we move this, nothing happens. And that's because it's going off of the textures uh, UVs, which goes off of the material. So when we duplicate it, this is what's going to happen. It's going to be identical, nothing special about it. Now, when we go ahead and we set up what's called world position offset, it goes off of the UVs of the world. So obviously right now this looks ridiculous because we are just getting the UV part so the XY part, so this is stretched. We'll go over this later when we go over triplanar. As you can see here, this looks identical outside of being smaller. To make this a bit easier, we can go ahead and scale this up a bit if we wanted to, but we're not going to, and here's why. This is now the same size of th as this, which is, and this was the identical size that it was to begin with. So with that in mind, when I click on this and I move it, it's hard to tell, but the material itself is staying still. To make this easier to see, if I make this bigger and I do this now and I'll turn this off for a, for a bit as I move it the material itself stays still so why is this important to know well because the units for a material in the landscape I mean for the world are much bigger and smaller so there's more of them and it's smaller. But when you want to do something cool like this, it appears to be part of the world. Now, because we haven't done anything with the normals yet, it, you can definitely see the difference just from the transition there. Regardless, now that you understand the difference between texture chords and world absolute, we will now go over how I do UVs. Now, yes, there is a custom rotator that you could utilize if you wished uh, to get similar um, results, uh, but I found somebody that I like uh, the results that he was able to produce way more than what um, Epic Games provides with this rotator, especially because at, the, at some point, as you can see here, right here, this is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, so it puts it in the middle. But scale is in between rotation and the rotator. Uh, sorry, the pivot. Um, so if I wanted to have this to work the way I needed it to, I would need to copy and paste this, making another custom rotator, I would then need to organize this and set it up to where 
the rotation center, which is right here, is on the right side of the scale. And the rest of it, which is right here, on the left side. So I like the way this looks more. So we're going to go over and do it, do it this way. Absolute world position. You also have texture cor whoops, coordinate. They're both red. They both deal with UVs just in different ways. Texture coordinates deals only with X, Y. So red and green. And that means when you are using the landscape, the uh, materials that are, uh, how do I word this? The textures that are harder to see because they are so much more slanted on this landscape become stretched. And later I'll show just how severe that stretching can be. I mean, as you can see, it's starting to do quite a bit of stretching as it is because I haven't set up triplanar. In fact, if we come here to the scale real quick, I'll show I'll set show you guys how to set this up in a minute. I make this a lot bigger. You can see it's starting to stretch. Now if I make it even larger, It's even more noticeable where it's stretching. See, look at that. It's stretching. And world position offset is what you use to fix that. And we'll be going over that later. Uh, I just wanted to show you the uh, with UV manipulation how things work. And seeing as you would want the, uh, the uh, mountains, cliff sides to be larger, to look more natural, that would be required. So, with that said, and without further ado, let us quickly go over this. I'm going to delete this here. Delete this. Now, there's a lot here, I understand. But it will make plenty of sense when we're done. So, UV rotation. Let me put this down, back down to a more reasonable number for us to see here. UV rotation. When I put this to one, I don't know if you uh, remember what it used to look like. If you watch this white spot right here, you'll see it's now pointing this way. And that's what UV rotation is. It's just the ability to rotate. So as I change this, it will continue to do so. 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.52 apparently. Now, if we come here to the offset, and I change this to 0 0.1 and 0 0.1, now when it rotates, it's hard to tell, but it's rotating from over here instead of the center. So that right here, along with this, controls the rotation. Now, there are um, several ways that you can do this. If you're wanting to have manual control over it, you wouldn't be able to do this. And if you turn into a parameter, it'll turn into this giant monstrosity. Now, if you just want to control both of them together, then this giant monstrosity, the way I have it set up, or this right here, would work just fine. It'll have everything exactly how it should be. So this is for when you don't care about controlling both X and Y. Haha, <laughs> that says S instead of Y, that's funny. 
So when you don't care to have uh, manual control over both of these, then just having offset to take care of both of these will work just fine. But if you want to be able to move just X There we go, that's why. It's all in the points. It, it's between 0 and 1. I forgot about that. As you can see, it's moving. And if we move this one as well, obviously, it moves on its own. But if you don't care about controlling both of them, then you would just come here, come here to offset, and then if we come down to this, point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, it's moving both of them and in a diagonal so it really depends on what you're doing uh, when I show how to create the uh, um, an effect where the material changes over time uh, from specific points or from noise or whatever having specific control over X and Y is necessary when you want it to be in a specific spot of the world uh, so meaning if sorry it's deciding to save so meaning you want the snow to start growing here uh, so changing the grass here to snow before it's changing it here you would want to have specific control over x and y so that you can choose exactly there or exactly there wherever you want it whereas if you don't care where it starts and you choose x and y then it will always go in this direction oh sorry this direction all right so that's how this rotation works uh, you choose the rotation I'll put this back to zero and you put it into a cosine and a sine and the cosine itself right here goes into the top multiply of this one and into the top multiply of this one and the sine goes into the top multiply of this one and the top multiply of this one now when it comes to the world position offset obviously because we want just control of R and G this happens but you want this so then we multiply the bottom of R here and the bottom of R here and then the bottom of G to this one and the bottom of G to this one then you will add these two together and then subtract these two together and make an append so what is an append well when you break them apart using a component mask they no longer work as coordinates they no longer work as RGB they're unique specific channels appending them turns it back into RG which turns it back into UV and then when you come here to scale you divide I divide because then when I hit one uh, it's where it's supposed to be two it gets bigger three it's bigger uh, versus when you do multiply when you hit one it gets it's the how it's supposed to be when you hit two it's smaller three it's even smaller and you have to be in between zero and one to make it bigger I don't like it um, and I put into an absolute so what an absolute is abbreviation for the mathematical term absolute value this e expression provides an absolute so it doesn't give you know points uh, 1.05 it'll make it exactly 1 and I multiply it by 25 and although it looks smaller here it is now the exact same here as it was before now if you wanted it to be exactly one meter across I believe it's 
like 225 will make it exactly a meter in size. Not sure of the math. I've, I've had to eyeball it in the past, uh, but I generally like to just keep it the same as if it was normal UVs. And that is where the scale comes in. We've gone over the rotator and the offset of XY. Now you may be wondering, well, which one should I use? It's really up to you. Me personally, for this, I need no precise control. I will make the pivot, this pivot point, the UV scale, I'll put here in the scale, rotation, I'll put here into rotation. And now, if I come here, put this to one, 0.5, put this to zero, this right here is exactly all of these. So when I hit save and then I come to the material instance, I now have this UV master. Click on this and I can control all four of these with ease versus I would have to check mark scale and then move scale, check mark pivot point and do pivot point, check mark rotation and do rotation. So the cool thing is if you're never going to deal with the pivot point or the rotation or you are going to deal with the rotation but not the pivot point, you could easily separate the offset into its own X and Y and do exactly what we did here giving you more control and keeping it all centralized. So let me close out of these. I know it's a mess, but anyways, if I click on this, if you double click on the line, it'll give you a point that you can use to clean up the whole thing is what I did just now. So with that being said, with quite a bit of organization, the directional, I mean the rotation set up like this is how I have it set up. If you want to learn more in detail about UVs and whatnot, I will put in the description where I learned what I learned about UVs and how I set this all up so that you can learn specifically in detail what this all means and how it all works. And that, ladies and gentlemen, are UVs in a nutshell. Thanks for watching. I will see you again Tuesday. Tuesday we will be going over what I did to change the color, not just for each individual square, but over the entire landscape. So remember how up higher the grass was a yet more yellowish color and down lower it was a deeper green. Um, we will be going over all of that next week on Tuesday. And uh, if we have time, we'll also go over uh, landscape noise within the color to help hide uh, the tiling. Because that is the first and cheapest and easiest way to remove tiling. Thanks for watching. See you next time.